So as I'm sure you all know, I really enjoy building little mini games in Minecraft. Things that you can easily construct and then just play with all of your friends. And I've done a few of them recently. The first one was the TNT Bond Defuse system, a game in which you had to solve this combination lock right here before the time limit runs out and the bomb actually goes off. And then of course we've got Snap, a game that I used to play when I was much younger using old playing cards that I've now redesigned and repurposed to work in Minecraft with an effective wind detection system so you don't have fights with your friends over who got it first. But today we're going to take a look at five more of them, five more games that you can build really simply and then just play with all your mates. Except if you're anything like me and you don't have any mates, you're going to have to have a game that you can play on your own, and this one does the trick. This is a rock, paper, scissors game where you're playing against the computer. These are your levers, and this is the computer's options. Now here is the rock, the paper, and the scissors, and I think for this one, I am going to choose paper. We won! We beat the computer straight away! Okay, best of three. Let's go for scissors. Scissors. Okay, that was a draw. Uh, let's go for rock this time. Okay, we've both gone for rock once again. I'm going to go rock again here. Oh, he's beating me! Alright, we've got one more to go. Uh, scissors. No! We got beaten by the system! Oh, Skynet is coming. I can feel it. But, on the bright side, this thing is incredibly simple, consisting of three main elements, which I've conveniently split up and spread out over here. So the first element is the randomizer circuit. Now this is what decides what the computer is actually going to choose, because of course, rock, paper, scissors isn't really a ta you can't really be tactical in rock, paper, scissors, it's just entirely random. So we have three different shulker boxes, all of them with different numbers of items on the inside, and each one will give off a different redstone signal strength, which is going to decide the output of the computer. Now we just run the inputs from the levers into the top of this thing, using some droppers, hoppers, monostables and things, and then here is the little decider circuit, which is the red coder. This is essentially outputting in visual form what the randomizer is doing, and it does pretty decent job of it. Now this next one is a bit of a classic in the Minecraft community, known in real life as connect four or four in a row. Now it has to be played with two different people, and essentially the goal is to get four in a row. This will become obvious when I start playing. So for example, player number one activates this one, which drops an item down. Then player number two says, I'm actually going to drop mine over here next to it. Then player number one says that he's going to place one over here and player number two says that they're going to place one over here. I have to say, <laughs> uh, yeah, this game makes a lot more sense when you're playing with someone else. <laughs> It's not exactly interesting when it's just me. But in this hypothetical game scenario, Red is the winner here because he has managed to get four of his item in a line like this. Blue was trying to, he was trying to get this one right here, but he didn't notice that Red was actually working on this one and Red has ended up being the winner. So to reset the game, all you have to do is hit this button and that will drop out all of the items. They will all fall down and then they will end up on these hoppers down here and end up in this chest ready to be replaced back up at the top. Redstone wise, we've got some pretty interesting things happening, none of them particularly complicated. We have a little monostable circuit which allows our piston to retract, then re-extend really quickly, which allows our blocks to actually drop down and be pushed across one at a time, and they will eventually stack up here. And then the way that we've done the reset circuit is we have a flush, piston door here with just regular pistons facing upwards and then they get retracted back like this we've got a pulse extender and then we have all of the hoppers and the torches on top which allow us to actually pick up the items seriously this is one of the simplest redstone contraptions that i've done for a very long time this one on the other hand is not but it makes up for it in being incredibly good fun this is the minecart dodger mini game and as you can see we've got four tracks of minecart rails and we have four dispensers out the back i'm sure all of you can guess what happens if we hit this button that will boot the system into action and straight away <laughs> we lost instantly <laughs> that was not a good start Okay, now I kind of have my head in the game. All right, okay, dodge that way, dodge that way. All right, try and stay in this gap. <laughs> it's always difficult, especially when you get like three of them come through. One minecart's fine, two minecarts, that's definitely doable. Three, you're really threading the needle. Oh, it's, it's pretty high stress though. Phew, a little bit of a break. One minecart, we can deal with that. Three again, <laughs> and again. 
And again! Oh, And that wasn't so hot by me there. But once you do die, you get blasted by a few potions and things, and then eventually the system actually switches off. So you can clear up all of the minecarts that are left over, and you can pick up all of this deadly, deadly stuff that's just floating around in the air, and then you can reboot the game by hitting that button. Redstone-wise, I'm going to do a quick whistle-stop tour. So when you hit this button over here, that will activate this RS Gnaw latch, which activates this hopper clock, which runs its output into these hopper dropper randomizer circuits. Now the outputs of these run into these monostable circuits, which make their way into these dispensers, which are actually going to be sending out all of the minecarts. So they will be shot off, but also it will activate this signal through this observer which will send a signal out through into these repeaters which will make its way to this block at the same time as the minecart is traveling across so when this minecart is on top of this block this repeater will be trying to power this block but the good news is is that if the minecart has actually made it there and it hasn't hit the player this piston will be extended which means that the repeater signal won't go through the block and won't hit this redstone line and won't activate this dispenser however if you do get hit by a minecart you will stop that minecart from activating this detector rail over here which means that the piston will be retracted which means the redstone signal will travel through the block activating this redstone line turning off our rs nor latch and also activating the dispenser blasting you with potions the only extra bit of circuitry is this redstone line out the side here which detects if four minecarts have been dispensed so if four minecarts have been dispensed then these pistons will retract allowing the player to move over to this side to dodge all four of them and then they'll be shoved back out as the minecarts go past making the game possible because otherwise it will be really frustrating which is exactly what this next game is meant to be really frustrating this is actually a gambling based game and it's designed to lose you money like all gambling based games are now you might recognize it from hermitcraft season 4 this is actually the gambling game that i created under the ground there and as you can see it's pretty complicated we've got some randomizer circuits going on out the back here we've got some rs gnaw latches some piston feed tapes we've got some hopper clocks we've got other redstone logic going on some other bits and pieces going on over there item sources everything like that all the good stuff essentially but what you have to do is throwing an item and that will activate this thing now let's see if we can win first time no <laughs> i already know that i can't win first time because this one has stopped on glass what we're looking for is a straight line of gold so let's see you place in another diamond block that's another nine diamonds gone in straight away i've lost again <laughs> not good not good not good all right let's try again we were one off that time i felt it i feel like this is the one okay that's a good start. Not a good start. We've, we've lost there. I'm determined to win on camera. I seriously am. So we've spent, what, three, maybe four diamond blocks? We've lost again. All right. Another one, maybe. I give up. Have we done it? Have we done it? Come on, stop. Yes, we won. We've actually managed to win. We won. Four diamonds. <laughs> we won. So, uh, including the one that we we gave in, we get four diamonds out. So that's that's a that's a profit of three diamonds if you win. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But if the thought of losing vast quantities of money isn't quite good enough for you, then how about the thought of potentially losing your life? This is Russian Roulette in Minecraft. Stand aside here, hit the button, and you can get, well, look, we've got ourselves a block of emerald. That's pretty cool. Door will open up, and we can leave. All good. Right, let's pop back inside. Uh, let's see. We got ourselves another block of emerald. I mean, this is easy. There's a one in six chance of dying, though. Now, I do just want to make you aware that there are other items available other than blocks of emerald. For example, there we got a block of redstone. That's cool. All right, let's pop out and go inside here. Oh, that time we got ourselves a diamond block. That's not bad. We've done well there. In fact, there's five different good items that you can get. But one of the items, well, that's a block of TNT. And that will be dispensed and it will be sent down into the water. And you're definitely going to know about that. I'm going to be honest, guys, though. We seem to be getting pretty lucky today. I think I might go out and buy a lottery ticket. 
<laughs> that was bound to happen at some point. Now, the reason that I chose a 1 in 6 chance of getting hit by the TNT is because traditionally, if you were to play Russian Roulette in real life, which is stupid, don't do it, then you would have a revolver which generally has six chambers and you would load up one of the chambers with the bullet and of course do the spin and do the pull and everything like that. We all know how that one works. Now redstone wise, this is probably one of the simplest ones of today's video. All we have is the dispenser, one TNT and then the five other items there and then we have just a simple delay circuit which runs into our iron door which will open up after we've been dealt our punishment or our reward. So there we go. Those are all the games that I've got for you. If you do want to build them for yourselves, and there'll be world downloads down in the description, just download them, chuck them into your world saves folder. If you don't know where your world saves folder is, then look it up on Google. There's plenty of resources that will allow you to find it. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.